Today, I'm on the trail of the Wright brothers, the inventors of the world's first successful powered airplane, and that trail has brought me to Dayton, Ohio, in the Carillon Historical Park, just south of the city. The park and its museum are here primarily to preserve Dayton's robust history, among which is the Wright brothers' work to perfect powered flight. It's also much more, so let's go and do a bit of exploring. If you haven't already figured it out, that is the Carillon, which is currently silent. It's a beautiful autumn day as I stand here at the museum entrance. So let's go inside and begin today's adventure. One of the first things I find is this cash register because Dayton is home of the National Cash Register Company. And I am quite familiar with this machine because the gas station I worked at in the 1970s had one just like it. It says this is a class 6000 register. Yep, looks pretty familiar. This is interesting. A carriage built by a company formed by a former slave. Charles Patterson was a slave in Virginia. After the Civil War, he came to Dayton and eventually formed a buggy building company and became quite successful in the business. It says he produced 28 different models. And this is the last known example of one of his carriages. The one millionth Huffman Bicycle. Looks like it might be gold plated. Now out onto the grounds. Our first stop is this old schoolhouse. Dating from 1896, the building was moved here from Springfield, Ohio. One single teacher taught grades one through eight at the same time. The best seat in the building in the middle of winter This is the Newcomb Tavern building, dating from the 1790s. The building was moved here from central Dayton. The left side was used as a tavern and more of a public area. The right side was the Newcomb's personal home. Here's a case full of artifacts, including this old musket. Some personal items. You can see through the windows how the building was covered with clapboards at some point, hiding the original rough-hewn timber structure underneath, which was eventually completely forgotten about until the building was moved and rediscovered. This is the William Morris House. Built here in Dayton in the early 1800s, it was moved to the park for preservation. This was also originally a two-bedroom home. So just the other side of the door where you're standing, there was a wall dividing the space in half. And then there was another wall dividing that into two bedrooms back right there. So you had two bedrooms and all your other living space was on this side of the house.
Now, what we're doing out here today, we've got about three different projects going. Uh, we're going to make one lady said that could be a walking stick, and she's entirely correct. It I was going to say, are you going to give it to me for later? Well, maybe when I get done carving on the top. <laughs> you know? And what we'll do is we'll take that broom corn and just tie it around this. Make and a broom. There's your broom. And, you know, all it gives you is a big task, but it doesn't give you a kernel of corn or anything like we're used to seeing in the yard or the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And it's a member of the sorghum family. Okay. So, uh, what we're doing, and we're just about finished with these, but what we would do is take this little volunteer from one of the Carillon Park trees and then clamp it between these two pieces of wood and then you just bring your draw knife back and anything that you think would be in your way, you uh, use this bigger draw knife on. Behind the broom maker is the Hetzer Summer Kitchen. Originally the Hetzer's home. Once the main house was finished, this became the family's standalone kitchen. A common practice in the early 1800s when this was built. This ornate looking structure is the Newcomb House. The sign says there is no proof that George Newcomb ever lived here, but the structure was moved here from land he owned and dates from 1841. Let's take a peek inside. Looks like they left in a hurry. Kitchen. Looks like a fraternity house. Any guess on what this is? Take a guess and leave it in the comments. And if I remember, I'll tell you at the end of the video. This nice looking building is a recreation of the Deeds Barn that once stood behind the Deeds Home on Central Avenue in Dayton. It was in that barn that a group of engineers formed a company called Dayton Engineering Laboratories, which came to be known as Delco, and today is called AC Delco. This structure was originally part of the National Cash Register plan. It provided the company with electricity and steam through the first half of the 20th century. Looks like there were two engines, each turning a generator. Sunoco Gas and Oil. I worked for a Sunoco gas station when I was a teenager. Back when, stations were all full service. However, our pumps were a little bit more modern than this one. Right next door is the Dayton Motor Sales Company. It's a replica of a typical motor car sales company. Inside the showroom is this 1908 Stoddard. This sleek looking car is a 1910 Speedwell. Looks like they've got a few cars back here in the service department. Sitting on the lift is a nice looking 1909 Lambert. The motorized wheelchair, scooter and small cars were made by the Custer Specialty Company powered by a little Briggs & Stratton one and a half horsepower engine. Next is the Great Flood Exhibit. Entering the building is the nose of this fireless steam engine called Rubicon. The flood struck the city in 1913 and while it decimated the region, 
It also brought the city together and citizens helped one another providing comfort, aid and assistance wherever they could. It also resulted in the construction of a large system of dams and levees protecting against future floods. Here's an early steam-powered fire engine, likely used to pump water from homes and basements. Here's that fireless steam engine that greeted me at the entrance. What looks like its boiler is actually a highly insulated tank that was filled with steam from the National Cash Register plant. The tank acted like a big thermos, keeping the steam hot and preventing it from cooling off. This little engine would run for about three to four hours before it needed to be recharged. And that is going to do it for this video. Oops, I almost forgot. That large stone I showed you near the beginning. Well, that's actually a step that allows one to step up onto a carriage rather than climb up its sides. Watch for part two of this Explore the Carillon Park here in Dayton. Until then, remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride.